Transmission of information by electrical means began with a telegraph. A telegraphic signal, series of dots and dashes, as well as an audio signal, can be transmitted relatively easily due to their sequential nature. The transition from a telegram to a spoken message was relatively straightforward. Then a greater challenge arose, the transmission of motion pictures. An image is made up of uh, many different forms and details of brightness and color which are present all at once. We may use a simple picture like this to illustrate how an image with many simultaneous details can be broken into a series of sequential data. In order to do this, we must divide the image into several horizontal strips. Since the information contained in a single line cannot carry details such as slanted lines or round images, the lines should ideally be many and very narrow to ensure the image is faithfully reproduced in detail. And then we must send all lines in sequence, either by means of a cable or a radio wave, to the receiver, where a special circuit and a device called a picture tube put together the image as it arrives so as to recreate the original picture, to ensure the image is faithfully reproduced. Together with the signal carrying the picture information, timing data, also called synchronism or sync, is also sent. The sync signal we are dealing with here is called the horizontal sync pulse, as it tells the receiver that a line of video is about to be sent. These signals can be plotted in a graph like this. On the upper side of the graph, is an area called white level. Any portion of the signal at this level will cause white light to be emitted by the screen. Further down the graph is the area called black level, and any portion of the signal at this level will cause the screen to go completely black. Between the white level and the black level are all shades of gray with their corresponding intermediate brightness on the screen. On the left side of the screen, you can see an electrical pulse which goes beyond the black level and even goes into an additional level called infra-black. This level has to be blacker than black, so that no portion of the picture signal, no matter how dark, can interfere with the timing. To better understand this issue of horizontal sync, let's look at the way a horizontal line is created. The initially dark receiving screen is hit by a powerful beam of electrical parts called electrons, causing the screen to shine with a small white dot. When a horizontal sync pulse arrives, this dot begins to move across the screen from the upper left corner to the upper right corner. When the next horizontal sync pulse arrives, the dot returns to the left side of the screen and starts a new line, somewhat below the first line. According to the video signal information, the dot becomes darker or brighter, reproducing the contents of the image. Each line is drawn below the previous one until reaching the lowest part of the screen, at which point the transmitting equipment has finished scanning the entire frame and now sends a different sync pulse called vertical sync pulse. This pulse sends the dot on the receiver screen back to the upper left corner and a new frame is started and this goes on and on. In real life, this whole process took place 30 times per second, but not using just 24 lines as in our example, but drawing 525 lines with a much smaller dot. The frequency of the horizontal scan was 15,750 lines per second. The frequency of the vertical scan was 30 frames per second, divided into 60 fields per second. The fact that the flickering of the screen was not noticeable on the screen was due to two factors. One of them was that the substance that made the screen glow when hit by electrons used to have a certain amount of persistence and it would continue to glow for a few seconds. 
The other reason was that our eyes also have some persistence in the retina and we will continue to see an image for a fraction of a second, even after the image is not there anymore. On the other hand, the accompanying sound of an analog television channel was transmitted separately by a frequency modulated signal of the right frequency so it did not interfere with the image on the screen. There were many interesting things in analog television technology which can hardly be covered in such a short video. Another quite interesting story is the way in which, after many attempts, the information needed for color transmissions could finally fit on the same black and white channel. In the second part of this topic we will analyze the addition of chrominance circuits to achieve compatibility between color receivers and black and white receivers. I hope this video has been interesting for you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Ciao Tarin.